Actually, this question is sort of two parts. The part one is at this time when you were first creating it versus now when you're creating your own show. How does it feel to represent an entire identity on the screen? Because you're, I know you're telling you're telling stories about yourself, but a lot of people who are seeing it, they're not seeing, oh, this is Zarka's story. They're seeing, oh, this is a Muslim story. So how does it feel to represent an entire identity? Is it a responsibility, a duty, a privilege? What kinds of things come it's up It's interesting, like I was mentioning at the beginning, because I'm not a philosopher. I'm a storyteller. And for me, I can only really represent myself and my own experiences. I can't represent other mm-hmm. people's experiences. And I've had people tell me this is not my mosque going experience or I'm not a mosque going Muslim. And that's fine. So my attitude is we are not a monolith. We're a really big community. And everybody has to tell their own truths and tell their own experiences. One person can't do it. So we need more mm-hmm. people. Like, you know, you have Rami, you have um, Citizen Khan. I forget the creator's name. It just escapes me now. You have Lady Parts. You know, you have so many Muslims, you know, American, Americanish tiger hunter. Like you have so there's so many feature films now and, and that I'm getting more. Each each of those tells a different part of the Muslim experience. We've only seen this like tiny slice of the Muslim experience and it's always like the immigrant first, second generation experience. And um, so, you know, I did my mosque experience, but my next show is about the divorce experience because I've never seen a, mm-hmm. a middle aged Muslim woman in her fifties being divorced and struggling with jealousy <laughs> and revenge. Right when she feels devalued as a woman, I mean that's mm-hmm. an ex- that's that's a whole world that I've never seen on television before. I'm not interested now in exploring the first the conflict between first and second generation, and you know wearing hijab right. and what will my mom say or what will you know like the refugee like that, that those stories I think have been have been told a lot and they and they're valuable stories, but they can't be at expense of the rest of it. Right. Yeah. Those have become um, narratives. They're, they've become almost tropes that they've, they've become sort of like this template of, Oh, this is what the experience is like. And so now you're stepping into something that's a lot more personal and a lot of, I mean, it comes to mind when Islamophobia was happening. A lot of times there were people who would be uh, almost apologists, like, look, like Muslims can be doctors and engineers and we like ice cream and we're human just like you. Um, and that built this counter narrative of the good model minority, good Muslim versus the terrorist Muslim. And so it seems like we're living in an age now, especially more recently with all the, the TV shows that you mentioned, where we're stepping out of that and saying, hey, my name is Rami. This is Rami's experience, I'm going to tell you. Not a narrative. I'm not going to speak on behalf of, you know. So I'm just curious to know if you feel that spotlight, if you feel people looking at you thinking, oh, this person is representing Muslims in Islam, or do you feel more liberated to just tell your own personal story? What is that? What is that? I mean, the, the push and pull of that feel Yeah, like? I mean, I'm not divorced. I should just tell you guys now. My husband would like everyone to know he never left me for a, a yoga. <laughs> <laughs> my age. Um, it's a matter of on yeah, the record on the now. Record. 